Hello, welcome to my channel. My name's Katie. I'm drinking my morning coffee. It's not that early, it's like 9 30. I'm drinking this. I'm using I'm doing iced coffee this morning. Um, this is it's recipe time. Um espresso. I use a mocha pot or an AeroPress, so it's not like actually espresso, but close enough. Uh orange slices and Topo Chico. Highly recommend. Um it is iced coffee. Even though it's winter, it's so hot in this room because I live in an old apartment and was built back during the other, the earlier pandemic, the 19, like, 17 one. Um, you'd think that the features they built in then would be useful now, but no, actually, um, I wish not. Uh, but I don't know if you know this, but back then, they put in I radiator heating, so we have just a radiator, and it's covered. I'm looking at it. I sit right next to it. So that's the place that I have light. Um, so I'm sitting right next to it. I'm looking at it disdainfully. It's covered in a box, which makes it hard to adjust because you have to take the whole box off, and I've put stuff on top of it. It's also storage space, which was not smart on my end. But uh, it's hot because back when they built this building, it was Spanish flu times, and... This is a fact you can whip out. They made the radiator so hot so that way you could open the windows in the winter and get air circulation when everyone was all Spanish flu-y and it would maybe prevent disease a little bit. I don't know if it worked. I just know that that's what they thought and that's what they've done. Because this is hot so the windows can be open. But I can't have the windows open because people are insane outside. Not really. Um, It's also not a great word. But it, it, it gets loud outside. People are going about their lives and... Um, even though I've told all of it, I scream it. Hey, I'm filming here. No one seems to care. So they continue to be loud. So the windows are closed and the radiator is hot, um, which is the opposite of their intention when they made this thing. So kind of fun fact, radiators are hot in old buildings because of the Spanish flu and other diseases. Uh, also, we don't have like 14 people shoved in here, so which is what they would do back then. So it's also less useful. Like if I'm getting sick, just my partner's also getting sick and we've decided that. We do it together. <laughs> Once I get to the bottom of the coffee, this will be going better. So today, I'm going to be talking about Sneaky Balm, specifically, and also, generally, the brand Salt New York, which are the people who make Sneaky Balm. So if you don't know about Salt New York, they're an indie brand based in New York. Like me, I don't say I'm based in New York. Um, but they are, they are based here. And they're made here. And it started by Kiki G, who is a makeup artist, and she also has her own YouTube channel. So if you're interested, if stuff I'm saying about this products is interesting to you, definitely go to Kiki G's channel. I'll link it and see what she has to say about these products because she made them. So she's way more informed than I am. Um, but I'm doing my best too. So I'll show you the blushes I have. I'll do a quick swatch of those, and I'll also be doing a wear test of the sneaky and hydrating balm. So does that sound fun? Yeah? Great. All right, let's get into it. All right, so first let me talk a little bit about Salt New York packaging, which is something I really like about the brand. It's what drew me to them. They have two travel cases and you put refills or the pans of their product in the cases, right? So there's no pre-built thing. You can kind of decide what you want. So they have a small case, which is this, and this holds four of their products in it pretty snugly and the case is 25 for the small and they also have the big which holds eight very loosely with room for other stuff um, which I like because I have other cream products or even when I'm feeling frisky powder products which I don't recommend because the powder will get in the cream and you have to wipe it off but sometimes that's where I am in life uh, but this holds eight with room for other stuff and it's 35 they're vegan leather they're really nice, they're really nice quality. Um, it feels like a good product for the price you're paying. Like, I don't feel like, oh, this is fun. No, it's sturdy. It definitely feels like it's protecting the product. Um, they do have mirrors. And it has the logo of the brand on it. Really nice. I quite enjoy these. I always travel with them. If I'm traveling, I'll often bring like stuff in here and then maybe even take out the cream and put powders in here because it just protects them so well. So I do really like these cases. Again, 25 and 35. And then they have refills, which are little, I'll show you, square pans of product like this. And these are $16. 
each. And you can put them in here. Uh, they do have sales quite frequently. I got everything that I own from them on sale. I got this really good deal because they were doing a 50% off for pre-order, so I had to wait a long time. But also it was very cheap. <laughs> um, so they do have sales if you can watch out. They do also have a bundle deal where if you buy five items, which is enough to get this case and fill it with four things, and then you could, you could also do more, but the minimum is five items. Uh, it's 20% off for your whole order. So pretty good, and there are plenty of affiliate influencer links out there as well. So that's the packaging. Again, I quite like it. One thing that's really, really fun about this is that there's no plastic waste. There's no extra plastic packaging. So let me show you what these little pans look like. So this is what the refill looks like, and they're magnetic, and it has the batch number, it's just metal, and then the product. I love it, and that's all that you get, and it comes packaged, I saved you, in little paper packaging. So there's no plastic at all, the only plastic, I guess, is the case, which is vegan leather, but that's supposed to last you a long time, and it feels like it will last a long time. So it's a great way if you're concerned about like the pa plastic packaging or the waste that makeup causes. This is a great brand uh, to look at if you're, I mean, the most sustainable thing is what you already have, which I guess is not words that I live by, but it is true. Um, but if you're looking to get something new because you've used up your old thing and you're like, hmm, maybe something with less plastic, check out Salt New York. So that's the packaging. Now let's talk about the, the product. They have four different products in their line right now. The first one I'm going to talk about is the Radiant Cream Tint Pro, which I don't have, um, but that's their highlighting, their cream highlight highlighting formula. There are five different shades in that for different skin tones. I've heard really good things about it, but I don't have it. Maybe I'll pick it up. Let me know if you want to see that. I'm not a big highlighter girl, so I don't know if I have a lot of authority. But that's one of their products if you're into cream highlights. Next up, they have the Sculpt in Bronze Cream Tint Pro. There are six shades here. There's light, medium, taupe. There's light, taupe, light, medium, medium, deep, and deep. Is that all six? I don't know. Um, but basically, wide range of skin, skin depths represented there. Um, here's the two I have. So this one is taupe, and it's what I use if I'm feeling contoury. And this one is the light shade, which is what I use to bronze. You can see I'm already making a dip. Let me show you those two. And how I use it, I, I'm a big finger makeup girl, um, which is why I love these products so much. Because it's just, it's easier for me. I don't, I don't know why, but it is. So here we have taupe and light. So that's taupe. And that's light. This is taupe. This is light. And you can see you can like pat them out and blend them out very easily. Um, they set down pretty well, uh, especially if you set with powder, um, but they're very, very easy to work with. So next up for products, we have the Lip and Cheek Cream Tint Pro for the cheeks and lips. I think they work well on both. I tend to use them more on my cheeks, especially with masks and stuff, um, because it's not like made to be a long lasting, like won't budge lip formula. But they do look very pretty, especially if you just want like a wash of color on your lips. So they work well. I just haven't been using them that way. Let me show you the ones that I do have. Here are the ones I have. And I'll do some quick swatches for you. First up, we have Spice. Next is Blackberry. Then we have Coco, which was a fall and winter limited edition, but Coco is still available when I'm filming this. Now we have Terracotta, which was from the Summer Duo limited edition, and unfortunately this is sold out for now, but they do sometimes bring these back. And finally we have Lilac, which was from the Spring Duo, so I have one from each of the seasons. Um, Sorry that they're also limited edition. This is also sold out. All right, so here they are all together. We have 
spice, blackberry, cocoa, terracotta, and lilac. And as you can see, they do kind of have a dewy finish. Um, the more you layer up, the dewier it is, but if you shear them out, they're definitely not matte, but they, they don't have quite that dewy shine. And here you can see them all together in the palette. Um, you'll notice that these do kind of get messy um, in the sense that they're not going to stay pretty and perfect. They don't even always come pretty and perfect, um, but I, I don't mind that. Um, I think it makes your makeup look like you use it, um, and it gives me, at least it gives me permission to just use these kind of like an artist would, just picking up paint and putting it on and not worrying too much about it looking pristine. I think they really lend themselves to feeling carefree with your makeup, which I think is the vibe that uh, we're all leaning towards. Maybe not. I know I'm leaning towards it, and this makeup definitely encourages me to lean into that finger application, tap stuff on, just trying to look pretty, but not trying to look like I tried too hard. But, so if you're into that type of makeup, I think this brand definitely lends itself to that. All right, now I'm gonna show you the Sneaky Balm. All right, so here's my Sneaky Balm in pan. I've used it a lot, so it's very messy. It also came like overfilled. Um, so it's like a bunch of product in here, like spilling over, which I prefer that to underfilled. But it also has like little imprints from the packaging on it. So um, let me show you. This is the lightest shade, which is shade N12. So let me talk a little bit about how the shades work here before I get started. So there are 12 shades and there's no, you know, there's no undertones and Kiki she explains it better in her video, but if you're worried about like, oh, am I warm or cool? That's not, that's not something that's present in these, these products. So if you have a hard time figuring out what shade you are in terms of undertone, this might be a good way to get started figuring out your depth at least. So there are 12 shades. Let me pop up the shade range right here. And again, I'm using the lightest one, which is a little, it's almost exactly my skin tone, and I almost wish it were a little bit lighter. They do sell color adjusters. I don't have any, but I think my next order, I'm going to pick some up. Um, Hannah Louise Poston and Khaki both are doing this. Uh, they're adding in the white color adjuster for a little bit more coverage and a little bit of a lighter look, so I may experiment with that next time I do an order. I don't know when that will be. I don't feel like I need that to make this wearable. I think this looks very good without it, but under my eyes a little bit, I think it could be a little lighter if that's the look I'm going for. But again, this is supposed to be sneaky. It's not supposed to look frightening. It's supposed to just make everything look like beautiful skin, which it does very, very well. But if you are worried, they do have color adjusters, including white and yellow and blue. So if you're like, I know I'm super yellow and this is not gonna be yellow enough, they also have adjusters. If that's what your, your vibe is, I don't think it's necessary with this. You don't have to be like a color adjuster. Um, to make this look nice, but it's there if that's the type of vibe you're going for. So let me show you what this looks like again. This is the pan, an N12. And this has a different formula than both the lip and cheek and the sculpt and bronze. Um, and those two have different formulas from each other. So this is way dewier looking, and maybe you'll see that here and a little bit more emollient. Let me swatch this up for you. So there you go. Here it is in kind of a thick swatch. So I find that it, it, it doesn't know what to focus on because it's like barely there. Um, but it's very, very dewy, very, very sneaky. So Kiki explained like if I, Tap this out into a layer that I would normally like wear it. It just makes see like your skin look nice. Um, the Kiki explains in her video that this is relatively high pigment. Like there's a lot of pigment in this, but it's meant to be sheared out very sheer. So don't go into this expecting to be able to get high coverage. I would say it's it, it's light coverage, especially the way I use it, and it can potentially be built up to medium coverage. But it looks best. At, at lightest coverage, um, at least in my opinion. 
on me it looks best it is high it's a hydrating balm so as you can see it's in a it's a cream foundation it's a balm foundation um, so, shiny. Um, so it is very hydrating um, I do think skin prep really is the best thing to wear under this um, I don't know if like primer necessarily helps it look better except for maybe under my eyes or my nose I'll wear a long lasting primer just to help it out a little bit uh, let's see what they say so this is made to be worn and applied in light layers uh, looking your Oop, lock down your skincare. Uh, she recommends that you exfoliate with a chemical exfoliant. I have done that. It was the day for it. Uh, I use the Ordinary Lactic Acid 10% with HA, and I really, really like it. But do what works best for you. So I did do that the night before. So I woke up. No dry patches, which is great. Apply moisturizer beforehand. Um, prime the skin. Again, I'll use just a gel moisturizer is a long lasting primer and then powder if you're so inclined uh, I do that especially in my oily zones to help it last a little bit longer but it doesn't need powder necessarily if you're already kind of dry so there we go that's the sneaky sneaky balm let's zoom in and actually put it on and I'll show you what I usually do all right so before I get started I just want to mention my hair is pulled back uh, something about the packaging so it comes again in these little paper slips all paper and then covering the refills are these little paper slips, covers, and they have a QR code to tips and tutorials. Mine's very messy because I'm a messy person. But, so I mentioned that because it's kind of fun. Alright, so let's get started with applying. Again, I've got skincare and sunscreen on. Um, and that's, that's it. Uh, I do sometimes use this in conjunction with the Hard Candy Hydrating Makeup Grip Primer. Um, and I'll put a little bit of that on my nose, just because that's what I usually do. Um, but otherwise, because my nose is a mess, I have no idea what it's doing. It's separate from the rest of my face. But otherwise, I'll just let you see what it looks like with the skincare. All right, so what I usually do, and I'll do this side first so you can see the difference, is I just take my finger, warm it up, and this is definitely something that warms up with your skin, which is nice. And then start applying. I treat this like an all-over skin tint. I don't usually use concealer with this, so I'll bring it up under my eye very loosely. I think it can handle like it does well there. So, just so you know. I also think this does well for spot concealing. If you take a little brush and dab it on. Again, it's not high coverage, but it is. It can be higher coverage, if you, especially if you spot conceal and don't blend out. So there it is applied, and then I just take my finger and really work it in, let it warm up, you know. And there you go. So I'm just going to do that all over my face, or where I need it. I try not to put foundation wire, like, here, because it's going to rub off anyway, and like, who's looking at that? I don't know, I cover it with bronzer and stuff, so it gets covered. Anyway, put it where I want it. Alright, so once it's applied, I will either take a sponge or this sponge or this brush. This is the e.l.f ultimate blending brush. I really like this for it too because it's kind of dense and I'll just kind of press in a little bit more. And then I'll go back in with one more layer. I think this layer is really really well and just tap where I want a little extra coverage. All right, so there we go. Let me zoom you in. This side has it, this side doesn't. So as you can see, very, very light coverage, but it's definitely a difference. Mm. 
my chin has been absolutely misbehaving lately. I've been going into the office a lot, so wearing masks more frequently and just generally stressed and also my period. Those are all my excuses. Um, let me take you over to a window and you can see this kind of also in natural light. All right, so I'm using my front facing camera just I don't know, for a change in quality, but uh, this side has sneaky balm, this side has nothing. All right, back to normal. Uh, let me finish applying it. You can see what it looks like all over the face. Alright, so here it is. I brushed it out and then patted some more so you can see like any like dark blemish It's not gonna cut very like super. It's just gonna like tone it down a little bit Same with like the discoloration I have here like all my little spots, but it just makes them like feel Still like good skin even though you have a blemish and um, let me show you with my little spot concealing brush I'll just dip into here and like tap where I want to cover a little bit better. All right, so again, it's not like it's not disappearing. Um, like it's fine that you have a pimple, um, but it just feels a little bit less like it's the thing about my face. No, I don't. You know what I mean? So um, I feel like it, it does pretty well. With spot concealing, um, especially if you're not into like a high coverage or like, you know, intense concealer. And since it's the same product, I think it blends in a little bit more seamlessly. So I'm going to spot conceal a little bit more. All right, there we go. So now I'm going to do just some bronzer, no contour today. Uh, and I'll also do some blush. Uh, I do have a new Fleek Makeup Challenge coming up after this. I'm going to film it, so uh, no eye makeup yet, but stay tuned. And for bronzer, I just do like swipe, 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 uh, and blend it in with my finger, and I'll show you the difference. All right, so it just adds a little bit of warmth. It makes everything kind of feel not weird. Um, again, these products layer really, really well on top of each other, so it's pretty easy to like go in, add a little bit more. The bronzer works so well with the foundation. But yeah, they blend out well with a finger or with a, a sponge. I usually do finger first and then sponge for the finessing. All right, so here it is with the bronzer. And now for blush, what color do we want to do? I'm trying to think of like probably something a little bit more neutral. Oh, so I think I'm probably going to do cocoa. And these, uh, when you're back, are kind of the same. Like I just put it on with my finger and then blend out with a sponge as needed. So they start out, especially some of the colors can seem like maybe a little, like they're going to be a lot, but they, it's so easy. Um, that's what I really like about this makeup. It just feels easy. It feels like I don't have to know anything because I don't want to know anything, right? Like I don't, it's not where I'm, it's not where I'm at. I just want to know nothing and look pretty. This makeup lets me do that. And I think it's because the makeup is smart, right? It's smart for me. Right, 
it's so pretty. Uh, other side now. And these blushes mix really well together too. Like you don't always have to use one one shade. That's not what you want. Everything mixes so well. They really kind of feel like like paints. And if you feel like you got too much, like maybe this is like a lot, you can go back in. I'm just going to kind of tone it down. If you want. Alright, there we go. Um, I'm going to powder using this. And then I'll show you again what it looks like in natural light. Alright, so here we are, right in front of a window. And then, for a little less of a blown out look, like, I'll cover it with a curtain. I made these. They're not good, I'm not showing you the bottom. Yeah, I just showed you the fabric, I just chose a fabric I like. Um, the construction and quality is not there. Alright, so I'm going to go film my ear fleek and amaze these. So exciting. Um, and then I will come back. It's about like 10 ish right now. Um, I'll just check in throughout the day. Uh, I'll check in after I film those videos. And then I have to run to the bank. So we'll see what it looks like there. See you in a bit. Hello, checking back in. It's like 2 21 220. Um, in the afternoon, so this is about like four and a half hours of wear, but I haven't been doing anything crazy or strenuous or anything, just filming um, your fake makeup challenge. Um, spoiler. <laughs> but uh, let me zoom in, and by zoom in, I mean like hunch creepily over the camera for you. Um, I am in front of the window, that's why it looks different, just so you can see it in like natural light. I don't know if that helps. That's what everyone else does. I'm just copying. So I have been wearing my glasses, um, but it, and it rubs off a little bit, but nothing crazy. As you can see, very dewy, shiny, one might even say oily looking. Um, I like it, especially oily, like right here in my nose and on my chin, that area. Um, so I could powder, and that would definitely help. Um, and this stands up to, like, I feel quasi-moto-y. Um, this definitely stands up to powdering, I, but more powder and more cake. I don't know. But... It doesn't look bad with powder. It doesn't reject it. As you can see, you can still see my pores and stuff. Like, it's definitely not, like, a pore filling or blurring thing. It's just pretty veil over everything. But it's wearing pretty well, even on, like, my pimple. Um, it has rubbed off on my chin a little bit, but I do this a lot. Anyway, so that's... Four and a half ish hour update. Hopefully, it's helpful. See you in a bit. All right, hello. Um, hope you're doing well. Um, it is almost eight. Um, and I have to do my little dumb home workout. So I'm going to take this off um, because I feel like it gets, I don't know, I don't like exercising with makeup on. I know people do it. Um, but anyway, so I thought I'd check in, let you see what's going on. Um, so I did run outside, get groceries. I tried to go to the bank, but they are, are closed at 3. So I got there at like 3.10. I guess... We'll just have to wait. That's okay. Um, but anyway, so I wore a mask. I feel like it rubbed off a little. Let me see if I can. I do. It's right here. Um, well, maybe this is gross, but um, I see rubbed off a little bit. It's my inside mask, um, especially like right here. These little edges tend to get it. I was it rubbed off a little, um, but that's what you makeup is. Uh, so let me. Show you there's no natural light anymore. It's dark out. Um, 
strike. So let me uh, yeah, zoom in weird just in this lighting. So you can see it rubbed off my chin a little. Um, here are my under eyes. Again, like no concealer. Just this, and that's why I really like this because I feel like it wears well. Um, under my eyes. Uh, most concealers like just don't look good on me. I don't know why. I've tried all different preps. If you have tips, let me know. But you can still see some of my redness coming through. You can see this is like how naturally red I am. I'm a very red person. Um, forehead definitely shiny. You can always repowder. Um, I tend to find myself doing that throughout the day with this, especially like right here. Um, and on my chin, uh, generally if I wear this. But um, here's the nose crust check. Does really well on the nose and like creases. So there we go. That's, uh, that's what it looks like. I feel like this is also holding up pretty well. A little creasy. What, what can you do? Um, so that's what it looks like. Final thoughts. This is a great foundation if you don't like the look of heavy makeup, but you still want maybe a little bit flexible coverage, uh, especially with pinpoint concealing. I think this is great for that. Uh, so I feel like it's good to use if you're not interested in using concealer, like you just want a one and done. This is the color of my face. Let's go. Look, I think it's great for that. It does, I do think it does very well on the under eyes um, because you can sheer it out so well. It's highly pigmented, but it shears. So you don't have to worry as much about how much there is because you only need a little bit. So I'd say if you're into that look, um, you don't mind a non-matte foundation. Like obviously there's gonna be some dew. It's gonna let some oils through. Um, this is for you if you're interested in matte, if you're interested in higher coverage, or if you're interested in longer wear. Like a lot of my red, like it's almost kind of gone and it's worn really beautifully. It's not like coming off in patches. It just slowly fades which I love. It's a low maintenance makeup, but you are going to look like you have less makeup on at the end of the day. So I would say maybe around hour five is when it really starts getting done, especially if you're wearing a mask or like walking around or sweating, being sweaty lady or something, one person. Um, then it's going to wear off. I personally don't mind, especially with the grace, the grace it has and the wear off. But if you want matte, if you want longer wear, this is not going to be for you or if you want higher coverage. Thanks for watching. I hope you're doing well. I'll see you around.